29. It'll be third down and still about uh, five yards to go for the Bombers, who pretty well running a second team offense in there now. Full house backfield behind our quarterback, who is now Tom Donnie. Donnie's a senior, second string quarterback. Now we have a flag before the play gets off. Maybe somebody lined up offsides. We'll see. Yes, offside on the uh, scrimmage lineup by Burroughs. Gay, it's been a lot of fun working with you this year. You enjoyed these games? Yes, I've had a lot of fun. Thanks for asking me. You know, I always think it's uh, it's kind of sad that of all the teams that play in the playoffs, every team except one is going to end their season with a loss like this. I know. It's sad. Yeah. It's really sad. So you end up with... Uh, 64 teams and 63 of them finished their season remembering a loss and only one gets to finish with a win. Yes, but it's been marvelous going this far with yeah, it. Yeah, it's been great. Okay, here's the third down play by Burroughs as Donnie calls the signals. Pitches back to one of his halfbacks who breaks one tackle and comes up and is piled up as he reaches the 30-yard line. Ball carrier that time was Garth Fort. Garth is a, Garth is a junior. And Carl Thomas made the stop, and Carl's getting up very slowly and seems to have been shaken up on the play. He's going to go off, and uh, looks like he's hurting a little bit on the right side, but he straightens himself up as he goes out. Nobody likes to show Coach Morrow they're hurt. Nobody. So it'll be punting time, and back to kick is Lockmuller, who's had a wonderful afternoon. He's a good football player. Good snap to him. Lockmuller punts it up here. It's a nice spiral. And Poling will take a, on a fair catch at the 40-yard line. So the Wildcats will have another possession here with four minutes and nine seconds left to go. And it's been a very frustrating afternoon for them. They've been unable to move against the Burroughs defense. And differently than last year, Burroughs has been able to move against the Warsaw defense. Been able to move very effectively. Last year, John Burroughs scored two third-quarter touchdowns to beat Warsaw 14-0 in this very same game played down at Warsaw, the semifinal game. Wildcats finished a very, very similar path. Okay, carrying the ball in there for the Wildcats was Daniel Keltner. As the Wildcats have moved their second-team offense in, and Keltner, the sophomore halfback, there's a guy we didn't mention earlier. Keltner is expected to develop into a real good ball player. He picked up a yard on the play. He's second and nine. He's a speed demon. And if they can get him in gear, he could be a very effective ball player in the future years. Straight into the line of scrimmage with the ball goes Rick Poling. Running the team now is uh, Mike uh, Slavens. Michael Slavens, the freshman quarterback. There's a, just a lot of good young ball players on this team, and I expect that Warsaw is going to have a strong football program from now on. Just about a yard gained on the play. It'll be third down for Warsaw. We're just uh, do going through the motions now with the Wildcats losing this one, and they're down 35-7. to Pretty well decided in the first half as John Burroughs scored 28 points in the first half, and... Dominated things pretty well. There goes Poling, the freshman, swinging around the left side and coming up close to midfield. Going to be a little bit short for a first down, and the Wildcats will send their first team back in. Kachukas made the stop for Poling. It'll be fourth down. About two yards to go. Bill Halleck back to kick. And we have a timeout on the field. As John Burroughs has guys all over, they can't decide whether they got a first or second team in there, and they finally call timeout to count noses. Jim Lemon, the very fine John Burroughs coach, walking out there to talk to his team. So it'll be a timeout for us here. Okay? Class act up here, nice people. They were very hospitable to us, very helpful. In fact, we wouldn't have gotten on the air without them. I didn't have a push-button telephone, and they went and got me one. That's what it took to activate the line out here. And Big Kenny told me, don't forget to take your push-button telephone, Bob. And I said, no, I won't, Kenny. And I did. Oh, well. First thing I've forgotten in a long time. Halleck back to kick on his 40-yard line. Twin safeties for Burroughs. But they're going to go for it instead. And Burroughs was waiting for that one. 
as Gott ran straight ahead. It's going to be close to the first down. Gott needed about a yard and a half, too, and if he'd made it, that's all he made. And they're going to have to bring the chains into measure. So for the second time this afternoon, the Wildcats went for it. Official timeout on the field as they bring the chains in. Now let's see how the measurement goes here. It's a first down for the Wildcats by the nose of the football. So they did it for the second time today. It's the only thing that's worked has been the fake punt. We had to line up and do that first, second, and third down. <laughs> I'm sorry. No time to laugh. Sometimes when it hurts, guys, you've got to laugh. Okay, back go the second stringers. Back in. Mike Slavens polling. Keltner. Back to throw with Slavens. Throws a nice pass out here. Hits his man. It's his down here at about the 30-yard line. Ryan Gronewald caught that pass down at the 30-yard line. And, boy, I want to tell you, Slavens laid it right out there. Nice pass by the freshman quarterback. They marked the ball at the 28-yard line of Burroughs. And it isn't too many freshmen that have a chance to play in a semifinal championship game. Mike Slavens. Going to go back and throw again. Pip pots it over there. It almost has another completion. Slavens had it down there in the hands of Adam Burdett but it was a little bit behind Adam. He twisted and tried to get it, and he couldn't quite handle it. So it's an incompleted pass. It'll be second down. We're down to two minutes here at uh, John Burroughs Field in Ladue, Missouri. A long ride to lose, but uh, that's the way it is. John Burroughs going to go into the finals next Friday against the winner of the Putnam County Butler game, and we'll never get to see Robbie Allen. There's a quick pass down here to Keltner. It was in his hands. Boy, Slavin's been right on target. Keltner dropped it. Slavin's has thrown three, and they were all catchable. One has been, one was caught. It'll be third down. I'm kind of excited to see how these kids look in the future. How about you? I think oh, I think good. we've got a lot of good football coming up. You get to see them over there at the high school. More than I that. do. I really do. And I see them walking around. They seem so small in the hall. And then I see them out there on the field. They look they look huge. And they're a good bunch of kids, too, aren't they? They are. They're yeah. really good. Mike Slavens, the quarterback, the freshman, barks signals on the third down, pitches it to Keltner, and Keltner drops it. It's recovered by Burroughs. Slavens' pitch was a little low. But Keltner couldn't handle it. And instead of dropping on it, he kind of fell away from it, and Burroughs recovered. Everything's kind of academic at this point, friends. Uh, 159 left in the ball game, and it's just second teams kind of fooling around with each other. The teaching of good sportsmanship also is the teaching of poise. We'll be bringing you basketball, Benton County High School basketball, uh, throughout the winter season with the Cold Camp Bluebirds, the Cardinals from uh, Lincoln, and the Warsaw Wildcat games. And you got to make a point of being tuned into those because they'll be a lot of fun, too. Second down for John Burroughs, and this time Kim finds a, an open hole, and he was on his way somewhere until he ran in to uh, number 80 out there, and I'm not familiar with that number. Who is that? Mm, don't have my glasses on either. That was Andrew Meyer, and Andrew just wrapped him up and brought him down. Another good freshman. So it's third down. 37 seconds, 36, counting down. The young player is out on the field now getting a few moments of experience, and uh, I think we can wrap this up pretty quickly after the game's over. I think they've got all the breaks back at the uh, they need back there. Is that right? Okay. All right. Another shot at the line there by John Burroughs. Back, and he breaks loose and comes all the way up over midfield and almost breaks it. Nice long run there by, um, hmm. Okay, it was Garth Ford. Just the difference here is the Warsaw second team is mostly freshmen and a few sophomores, and the uh, John Burris second team is a lot of juniors in there. I don't think we're going to have another play, friends. The clock is running out. The 1989 football season has been a great one. The Wildcats are going to finish with 12 wins and one loss. A tough one here. 
but the Wildcats have lost it by the score of 35 to 7. We can wrap things up pretty quickly here, I believe. Gay, do you have any more of those uh, things you need to read? You got all those done. Okay. Well, let's just kind of summarize this thing for you, and then we'll get out of here because we got a long ride home. The, uh, by the way, anybody see my glasses around? There they are. Thank you. I can probably summarize better if I can see. Okay. The Wildcats uh, just couldn't handle things here this afternoon at all. The first time the um, John Burroughs Ball Club got the ball, they went 62 yards. Uh, driving with it down the field, kind of unmolested, if you will. Hit pay dirt with five minutes and ten seconds left to go in the quarter as Cranston took a pass from Edwards and went in the end zone, and it was 7 nothing. Then uh, Warsaw fumbled the ensuing kickoff. It was recovered by Burroughs on the 31-yard line of Warsaw, and Burroughs came booming down for their second touchdown, hitting pay dirt at 108 left to go in the first quarter with Cranston, who played a fine game this afternoon, crashing over and making it 14 to nothing with